flying in to visit you. Oh, it's your favorite bath toy. It's Mr. Mr. Spongy. Spongy. Oh, yes. Oh, oh there, let me kiss you on the hand. <laughs> he also clean you. Look. Yeah. Look. Where has Mr. Spongy gone? He has disappeared. Huh? Oh, Where's Mr. Spongy gone? I do not know. He seems to have oh, disappeared. No, Mr. Spongy. Mr. Mr. Spongy. Mr. Spongy. Mr. Spongy. There he Mr. Is. Oh. He's back, and he will kiss you again. Oh, there Mr. we go. Oh, Mr. Spongy, you got we... me again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, my captain, are you ready for your bath fragrances? No. Eh? Okay, but only if Mr. Spongy comes back to play later. Was it Mr. Spongy? Huh? What's he saying? He says yes! <laughs> now. Uh, beef or chicken? Oh, um, one of each. One of each, okay. One of each coming up, okay. Here. Here we go. <laughs> and don't you think uh, it would be better if you had some water in your bath? Water? Oh, no, no, no. I am a rat, after all. We don't want to get too clean now, do we? I suppose not. Uh... Uh, shall I uh, dry sponge your back? Yes. No. It's time for my pedicure. Huh? It's time to cut me nails. Oh, I do hate this bit. <laughs> Steady! Oh, no, my captain! It sounds like those fools Pepper and Sneeze have returned from one of their scavenges. Oh, excellent. I wonder what treasure they brought me today. Probably something stupid, my captain, knowing them and their stupid, stupid ways. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Get me my robe. Okay. My robe. At once, at once, my captain. <laughs> I think you'll be really pleased with it. Yeah. Oh, it's a treasure, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. <laughs> right, everybody, shut up. And that means you, too, you pepper and you sneeze. <gasps> For our vile captain, Rash! Oh, oh, thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. There really is no need. Let me see. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay, pipe down. Pipe down! Yeah, pipe down, okay, you hear? You it? pipe down! Uh. Now, what treasure have you got for me today, eh? Mm. Oh, it looks like a pizza. Extremely overdone. Just the way you like it, huh? No, that's no pizza. That's a cow, Pat. Huh? Don't be stupid. That is not a cow. It does not have four legs or milky tugs. And it does not go... <laughs> and my name is not Pat. It is tortilla, you know that. No, you sniveling slug. It's a cow, Pat. Mm-hmm. Look, my name is not Pat, and that is no cow! No, you buffoon, a cow Pat is cow's... doings! Oh. Huh? You mean that... that is cow poopy plops? Mm -hmm. uh, but I just... Oh, no! <laughs> 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 oh, but this is of no value, my captain. Pepper and sneeze, they do insult you with such a hideous gift. Uh, we should kick their, their, their stupid rodent butts off the ship. Hey, Au contraire. Cow's doings hmm? can be as valuable as gold to the right buyer. Tommy Haystacks was helping his father round up their cows for the usual 6 p.m. milking. When suddenly they were bathed in flashing lights. Something was hovering above them. It was a space craft, just like the ones Tommy had seen in his beloved comic books. Suddenly, Mr. Haystacks was sucked up into the ship in a beam of light, and in an instant, the ship was gone. Tommy ran home terrified from one field to another as fast as he could. But when he got home, there was his father sitting on their doorstep. What? The weird thing was that although he was only gone for five minutes, he had five days' beard growth. Whoa. Was it 
alien abduction? <laughs> Nobody said anything about ducks. Oh, did they do experiments on him? No. Mr. Haystacks had a very pleasant experience. The aliens offered him cups of tea and slices of cake and talked endlessly of agricultural matters. Oh, oh my captain, was it Battenberg cake? What? I do so love it, with its pink squares and its yellow squares and all the lovely marzipans around the, the edge. Uh, uh, so, what you're saying is a bunch of little green guys traveled five million light years in a flying saucer to Haystack's farm to talk about... Farming? Precisely. But what they were most interested in was manure. Manure? Yes, manure. The methods of procuring it, the quality, consistency, and all aspects of manure management. Wow. You see, the alien survival depended on manure. On oh, manure. <laughs> they came in search of number twos. <laughs> <laughs> they explained to Mr. Haystacks that the plant life on their home planet of Kokar was near extinction, as their own fertilizer resources were almost depleted. Ah, so they needed manure as a fertilizer to grow their own plants. That's right. Oh. Otherwise, they would have no food to eat and their species would die. Oh, that's so the good-natured Mr. Haystack struck a deal with the little green man, and over the next two years, the alien visitors took literally hundreds of tons of manure back to their planet. Oh, that, that's a lot of poo. No, it's absolutely true. Tommy looked forward to every visit from the aliens, and he was absolutely fascinated with the craft, but was never invited on board. However, like any boy of his age, curiosity was bound to get the better of him. Whilst the aliens were loading up wheelbarrows of dung, Tommy sneaked on board. <gasps> It was amazing, just like he'd imagined. Oh, did they have a hot chocolate-making machine with chocolate sprinkles and marshmallows? Oh, with a froth nozzle to give you a foamy top. Silence, or you'll have a froth nozzle where the sun doesn't shine. Oh, mm, sorry, your stinkiness. <laughs> he was investigating, he heard aliens approaching. Well, he, he didn't want to get in trouble, so he hid. And that's when he overheard the two aliens discussing their cargo and how after one more trip to the farm, they would have stockpiled enough manure to fuel a thousand of their battleships and then they would invade Earth! No! Oh, no! They weren't using it for the plants at all! They were going to power their ships on this stuff. Wow! Indeed. Tommy couldn't believe what he was hearing. He realized that by supplying the aliens with cow manure, he and his father had sealed the Earth's doom. Oh. Tommy knew he had to do something, and quickly. He managed to get back outside unseen, ran to his father and explained to him what he'd heard. His father told him that that was nonsense. They were perfectly harmless little green chaps and that Tommy had read one too many comic books. Mr. Haystacks didn't want to know anything more about it. He spent the following weeks researching through all his favorite science fiction comic books. It was all down to Tommy to save the planet. Wow. But my captain, how could a lone human boy save the planet Earth from invading alien types? I mean, 
They're not clever like us rats, you know. Not true, not true. Not but Tommy had come up with a plan nonetheless. <gasps> the spacecraft arrived at exactly the same time as usual. <laughs> Whilst Mr. Haystacks was helping the aliens load in their final stinky cargo, Tommy made his way underneath the ship with a sack containing a number of footballs. It's hardly time for a soccer match with the aliens when they are about to invade the planet, eh? Hey, quiet! Oh. Tommy jammed the footballs into air vents under the spacecraft, making sure they were a tight fit. As the aliens were leaving, their leader smiled a sinister <laughs> smile and told Mr. Haystacks that the next time they'd see him, Tommy's father and all humankind will bow down before the new alien masters. Oh! As the spacecraft's engines ignited, Mr. Haystacks realized he should have listened to Tommy after all. He had been tricked into helping an alien invasion. Tommy consoled his distraught father and told him not to worry, as his plan was just about to take effect. A moment later, there was a huge explosion in the sky. The alien craft was blown to smithereens. You see, Tommy explained that by seeing the spacecraft's air vents, the buildup of methane gas from the cow manure would reach critical point. And just as the alien pilot switched on his turbo warp boosters, the extra heat generated would be enough to ignite the volatile methane and cause an explosion like a giant space fart <laughs> that would save man. Oh, wow, that is unbelievable. Yeah. So what you're saying is a bottom burp saved the world. No, a little boy called Tommy and his beloved comic books saved the world. <laughs> All that from comic books? Wow! Yes. Perhaps I shouldn't have cancelled my subscription to Sparkles for Little Girls. <laughs> what? Well, no, no, they have some great articles in there, huh? Oh, shut up, Tortilla! <laughs> well done, Pepper and Sneeze. It's a wonderful treasure. Oh, thanks, big dude. Oh, 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 oh my captain. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you could say I was right after all. <sighs> it is a pizza. No, it's not. <laughs> it is a... <laughs> it is a... Pooperoni pizza! <laughs> oh. Oh. Pooperoni, pepperoni, you know, you change the words, it's a joke. Oh, no. No? Your terrible joke has made my tail all tense. Uh oh. Listen, I'd love to hang around and chat, but I have a badminton match to play, and I'm already 20 minutes late, you know. Okay. You're going nowhere! Yes, your vileness. Oh, steady! Sorry, my captain. Oh, right, that's enough of that. Hmm? It's now time for my nose hair trim. There was nothing about that in the job description. <laughs> Go on, get the pliers. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, lovely.